So this slide over here talks about when you would need an antibiotic. And there are some reasons when in dentistry we would need an antibiotic. One of the reasons is infection. If you have a dental infection, if you have um, like an abscess, you know, your mouth is in severe pain, usually what dentists would do is they would treat it. So let's say if you have an abscess, they would drain it. So the abscess goes away. And that's usually the number one thing to do, to drain it so that you don't need antibiotics. Now, if you absolutely need antibiotics, then um, what they would do is um, they would prescribe it very carefully, right? They don't want to over-prescribe antibiotics because that could be bad for you. One thing to keep in mind is the patient and host response. So what that basically means is if you have a bacteria inside your body, technically what we would want is we would want our immune system or immune cells to kill the bacteria or to kill the pathogen. Pathogen is something bad to kill it. But sometimes our immune system doesn't work. Our immune system isn't able to kill the bacteria, and so that we need extra help. We need an antibiotic now. We need something else to come and help the immune system kill the bacteria. And so host response is your body's response. Is your body able to kill the bacteria? If your body is not able to kill the bacteria, then we're going to need antibiotic to help kill the bacteria. And then prophylactic indication. So when I think of prophylactic right now, what I want you guys to think about is prophylactic kind of means debridement. So sometimes when you're debriding your client, um, the client needs to have taken pre-medication before debridement. And we're going to look at when a client needs pre-medications before debridement. But the, just keep in mind that there are some times where we cannot just go ahead and debride our clients. We cannot just go ahead and scale away. We need to look at their medical history and see if there's any indications for them to take a prophylactic antibiotic, for them to take an antibiotic before scaling or before debridement. And we'll look at that towards the end of the lecture. So there are always going to be some disadvantages with taking antibiotics. One of the disadvantages is called superinfection or supra-infection. And what that is, is let's say you take an antibiotic to treat yourself and the antibiotic doesn't work. And now you need to take another antibiotic to get it to work, to get it to kill the bacteria. So the first dose of antibiotic didn't work. It didn't kill the bacteria. Now you need a second different type of um, antibiotic to kill the bacteria. And so we can avoid this. We can avoid a super infection or a second infection, okay? a second infection. And the way to avoid this is if you, if you're prescribed a antibiotic that's more specific, or what we say is narrow um, antibiotic. So there's something called broad, um, broad antibiotic and narrow um, antibiotic. And the difference between the two is narrow specific antibiotic basically means that we found an antibiotic specific to the bacteria. So that antibiotic is meant to kill the bacteria. Sometimes we had broad specific bacteria, or sorry, broad specific antibiotic, and that is basically an antibiotic that can kill many types of bacteria, but it may not necessarily be specific to the bacteria that you have. So we like to use the narrowest um, type or the most specific type of bacteria. So if we use the more specific type of, sorry, more specific type of antibiotic. So if we use the more specific type of antibiotic to kill the bacteria, that is the best way to avoid a second infection. And also we want a short course of therapy. So just take an antibiotic for a few days and then you're done with it. You don't want to take an, a, a long treatment, a long course, because that can make it worse. That can increase the chance of you getting a, a second infection. So use the most specific type of antibiotic for your bacteria and use the shortest course of therapy. So if, if you can get a, um, um, an antibiotic that can treat the bacteria in a short period of time, that's even better. There are lots of allergic reactions that could happen to antibiotics, which we'll look at. There are some drug interactions too. So if you take a birth control pill, um, that can affect your... Um, antibiotic use that can affect how the antibiotic will work it can reduce the chance of your antibiotic from working and if you take an oral anticoagulant so remember um anticoagulants are like blood thinners something that thins out the blood that can also affect the antibiotic so it can diminish the result when you use antibiotic gi pain so if 
uh, stomach pain is a very common complaint with antibiotics. There are some medications that you cannot take with um, if you're pregnant, so some antibiotics you cannot take, and some that are safe. Um, cost is huge. There are some antibiotics that are very pricey, and there are some that are not. So for people who don't have insurance, they may be hesitant to purchase some antibiotics because of the cost. So the first antibiotic we're going to look at is penicillin, and this is probably one that you've heard of. There are many different types of penicillin. There's penicillin G, and this is usually the one that we administer to IV. And then there's penicillin V, and this is the one that you could have orally, so you could swallow the pill. Amoxicillin is um, a common one. If you look at the way um, this ends, so psyllin and amoxicillin, they come from the same family. So amoxicillin comes from the penicillin family. And the way I know this is by the ending. When you have similar endings, there's a high chance that it's coming from the same family. So how does penicillin work? Um, when, actually, before I tell you how it works, one of the things I want to tell you is that this antibiotic is the less likelihood, is the antibiotic that has the less chance of you dying from an allergic reaction. All the other antibiotics are a little bit more risky, but this one is the least risky. But the disadvantage of this is that it goes into your bloodstream a lot slower compared to other antibiotics. So it may take a while for it to kick in, and so that could be a downside. It is a bactericidal agent, which basically means that it kills the cell wall. So it kills the cell wall and the bacteria dies. Penicillin is the antibiotic that has the most common uh, cause of drug allergy. So many people could be allergic to penicillin. Um, there are many things that could happen. I, for one, have hives when I take penicillin, but other people could be, um, you know, could have difficulty breathing, their mouth could start swelling, or throat rider could start swelling up, and they could basically go into a shock. And it could be fatal, but again, that happens in like 0.05%. So very few people have um, that side effect of them going into an anaphylactic shock. And this is what happens in an anaphylactic shock. Your, um, your airway kind of constricts. And it, so this is normal, and it kind of constricts, and now it's harder for you to breathe. So when would penicillin be prescribed? If you have dental abscess or an infection, you may prescribe that. And amoxicillin is usually the ch choice that dentists use. It's usually the antibiotic that um, dentists provide to clients. And the penicillin is good for aerobic and anaerobic bacteria, which basically means it's good for gram positive and gram negative. So if in here I have gram positive and gram negative bacteria, Amoxicillin should be able to kill it. Okay, and one of the advantages of amoxicillin is that it goes into the bloodstream pretty much, um, you know, right away compared to penicillin. Then we have um, Keflex, which is um, an antibiotic that comes from the cephalaxin family. And um, one of the advantages of this is that it helps both it helps kill both bacteria so the gram positive and the gram negative it's administered orally or it could be injected and the way this works is it um, kills the cell wall so it's bactericidal it kills the entire cell wall and again if you look at the let me just go back up if you look at this um, table that I had over here, you can see that the cephalosporins falls under the bactericidal, which means that it kills bacteria. Bacteriostatic means it slows down the uh, progression of um, bacteria from growing, whereas bactericidal means it just kills it. Let's go back here. Okay, again, one of the main common side effects is the stomach can get upset. Let's move on to macrolides. So macrolides look at different types of um, antibiotics. That's called erythromycin, 
azithromycin and clarithromycin. Notice that they all end my, uh, with mycin. And so when they end with mycin, you should know that it comes from the macrolides family. Now the way it works is it's not bactericidal, it's bacteriostatic, which basically means that it slows down the growth of um, bacteria. And I'm gonna, in the next few slides or in the later on in the lecture, I'll talk about how it does that, but basically what happens is it interferes with protein synthesis. And I'm gonna show you pictures later on. But to basically explain this, what that means is that inside the cell we have proteins and proteins are needed to keep the cell alive. And what this antibiotic does, what erythromycin does, is it, in, it tries to interfere with the proteins inside the cell. And when it interferes with the protein inside the cell, these bacteria isn't able to survive. Right? It, I, I, I shouldn't say survive, but it isn't able to replicate. It isn't able to grow. It stops the growth. And so that's what's happening here. Bacteriostatic means it doesn't die, but it stops bacteria from growing and spreading. So erythromycin can be um, given orally as tablets or even injected. And again, GI, so tummy can get upset. Then we have azithromycin and clarithromycin. And again, they do the same thing. So they come from the same family. They come from the, it's right here. They come from the macrolides family and they do the same thing. They interfere with the protein synthesis. So bactericidal means they kill the cell wall. So this is the cell wall. They'll kill the cell wall and the bacteria will die. Bacteriostatic, which is what these medications do, is that they interfere inside. We have proteins inside ribosomes basically make protein, and they interfere with the protein synthesis, with the making of the protein, which means that the bacteria becomes weak because we need proteins to uh, survive. We need the bacteria, rather, needs protein to survive. And without protein, the bacteria will not thrive. And again, the main side effect is um, gastrointestinal, so the tummy could get upset. Okay, we're going to leave it as that. And next um, lecture, we're going to look into tetracycline.